This episode of In Focus is a special look at a live streaming setup using three cameras, which you can see over there with Liam. Uh, we're using a Panasonic CX350, a GH5S and a GH5, routing all of that through a switching system. And all of this is quite a relatively low cost solution. been streaming here for four days now we've just finished so if we're looking a little bit worn that's why but actually it's gone really really well So let's have a look at the setup over here. These are our three cameras. On the far side, we've got the CX350. With this camera, what we're doing is routing HDMI, not SDI, into the back. There's a reason for that, which I'll show you on the uh, switching system. And then also an XLR feed from the desk. Uh, we did have a shotgun microphone on the top, but we actually found that the sound was so good here. The sound guy was very good we didn't really need it as a backup. And then in terms of the settings, you, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, the light in here, if I just pan around, these are kind of the lights that we've got. And this is fairly normal for an event, but that means that you've got to bump up the gain on the CX350. So I'm at 12 dB and my iris is at 3.9, which I think for that shot is pretty much, well, it would say open. Let's have a look. I can go a little bit lower, so go, I could go all the way down there. Um, the issue that we've noticed is that the focus when you bring that F number down uh, is really fine. So if you've got people kind of slightly different distances from the camera, sometimes it looks like one person might not be in focus. It's barely noticeable, especially when you're streaming at 720p. In terms of the image quality from the three cameras, I'll just put them all in view there. Um, the one in the middle is the GH5S that Liam's using. That's by far the best, particularly with that 50 to 200 mil lens on it. GH5 does pretty well. That's got the 12 to 35 mil uh, lens on it. We did try the 42.5, which is an f1.7 just because of the light. But again, we had problems uh, with that, um, certainly down at kind of f2. Uh, the person nearest to us might be in focus when they're speaking on a panel person further away wasn't uh, or vice versa and it's interesting that for a lot of us bokeh and that depth of field is really important when we're doing portraits but actually when you're filming a panel you kind of want to see everybody in focus if you had um, a, a big kind of amount of bokeh or depth of field it's just really weird uh, on screen so we ended up switching back light has definitely been an issue here and the worst image not surprisingly the CX350 because it's got a one inch sensor. So these are micro four thirds. Um, of course, micro four thirds, if you don't know, it, uh, the sensor is bigger than a one inch sensor. Uh, what we could have done is use some adapters like Metabone Speed Booster, which we brought and adapted lenses. But if you travel a lot, you want the smallest lenses and the 50 to 200 mil there, which is an F2.8, is a fantastic lens. So let's move on to the GH5S. As you can see, we've got HDMI coming into it. Ignore the preamp, because that's just so you can hear me um, at the moment. And basically this is for our close-up. So if we turn the camera, Liam, to see, well, we'll just use this step and repeat. Um, you can see the kind of image that we're getting there. And this was just beautiful for faces. So GH5S, not surprisingly, it's better in low light. Uh, with a 50 to 200 mil lens was really good. Uh, really enjoyed using that lens. We've also used autofocus on here because we knew we were looking at faces and Liam's been operating all three cameras. So that's another big uh, change for lower cost systems. You don't have a camera operator per camera. On the GH5 over here, this has got the 12 to 35 
um, on it. You can see that we're shooting in HD as well, 30 frames a second. The reason for that is that we were going out to Periscope and Twitter, so that's what that's expecting. Um, but on this one, you see it's more of a wide shot. It matches um, the image that we're getting from the GH5S, and we're using the Cine D profile. Uh, so we're not applying a lot because we're live streaming. And you can see my settings, 3.5, 60 frames a second, so that I don't get flicker from the screen. So this is my streaming setup, two MacBook Pros, one smaller than the other. Um, this one has got my preview shot, and this one has got um, the actual shot. And then over here, you've got uh, the A10 Mini, which is new from Blackmagic Design. And basically, we are using uh, three different um, inputs in terms of the cameras and then one output for the preview. Um, you probably notice that I don't have multi-view using this system, but this uh, device over here, the Blackmagic, is $299 or 299 euros. It's not particularly expensive, but what it does allow me to do is just queue up the shot. So if I show you the preview, this is my next shot, if that makes sense. I can very quickly change just cycle through my shots. So as long as I know what my next shot is, this works just fine. And then over here, <coughs> this is my current shot. So this is what's going out. Uh, in this case, I was streaming to Twitter. Um, the other thing I should say, if you want to preview on a Mac, the only reason I'm doing this is I've got two MacBooks just for, in case one goes wrong. For editing, for file transfer, I bring two with me. So I'm using an encoder here to be able to see that HDMI output, but you could have used a HDMI screen. In terms of things that I've learnt, <laughs> um, multi-view definitely would help. So if I could see all three, I really enjoyed some of the functions on the A10 Mini. So I can control, for instance, here, I can control the volume that's coming from the desk. Uh, I chose to use camera one, and the reason for that is that's the CX350. The preamp seems really good, does a really good job of balancing the audio. And in fact, if I brought the audio straight in using the mini jack, which I did also do, it was kind of more blown out, more hot, as they say. So I, I routed it through the camera. Um, other things to watch out for, I mean, certainly all this picture in picture stuff over here, I didn't really use it. You need to configure it through the ATEM software, which is this. So you can configure it. And in fact, if I step back here, I'm easily amused. You can see me changing things on here and you should be able to see the, the lights changing, which is really cool. So probably the final thing to think about is actually the audio sync. So if I show you back on OBS, um, what you need to be really careful of is that HDMI the reason a lot of professional systems use SDI is that HDMI introduces a delay. Also, HDMI cables traditionally have not gone probably longer than about 20 meters. But now, in fact, we've got one here, um, you can get fiber optic based HDMI. So the two ends of it are HDMI, um, but in between it's fiber optic. And that means that you can run for up to 100 meters. HDMI based systems tend to be cheaper. SDI adds hundreds of dollars straight away just for having it, particularly on a camera. But the downside is you've got a delay. So you have to figure out what that delay is. And if you look at my settings here, um, I've added a delay to the audio because the audio is quicker than the video of 250 milliseconds. And I've figured that out by getting Liam, my lovely assistant, uh, to sit in the chair and then literally looked at his lips moving and done it by eye. But there is also a couple of apps that you can use with like a bouncing ball and a sort of metronome to figure out what the delay is. For us, we did it on the close-up camera. So that was the GH5S because that's where it would be most noticeable. Um, one of the issues is that different cameras potentially can introduce different delays. So if you've got several close-up cameras, you need to start thinking about Genlock maybe better cameras, maybe Blackmagic design with a tally light. Um, but the idea behind this system here is it's a, it's a relatively low cost system that you can take around the world in a case, which is basically what I do. Um, and you can, uh, you can set it up anywhere. So that's it for our setup here in Barcelona for live streaming. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe and tell a friend.